Thank you for joining us on our latest edition of Over the Hump, our all access video series profiling key figures in the athletic department. I'm Evan Budrovich. On this episode, we feature Nick Stanger, the director of equipment for the entire athletic department, overseeing all 21 of our sports on campus. Nick, as you obviously know, Deion Sanders once said, if you look good, you play good, and you get paid good. We won't talk about the revenue side of things for this conversation, but let's dive into the Under Armour brand that a lot of our programs wear in their uniforms and apparel. What does it take to ensure that these teams have all the Under Armour products they need for when they go out in the field? Well, Evan, appreciate you having me on. So typically we, we actually book stuff out a year in advance. So right now, our fall sports are actually getting ready to book for next season. So, you know, Under Armour is actually coming out with their new product for the following season. Um, and we book everything out within one year in advance. And so what that does is Under Armour is able to forecast how much to make, how much inventory to make. And then from there, we're able to, uh, you know, secure that product and, and get it here then. And then depending on the sport, like fall sports, for instance, we'll, we start focusing on uh, uniforms and, and that kind of stuff uh, in the spring then. Let's stick to some of the sports coming up since it's so hand in hand right now with the winter sports for basketball, for example, as they get ready for the season, how much of a conversation goes on between the coaching staff and yourself about getting apparel or just making sure things are in order? Yeah. So we, for, for basketball, we start that process in right about the, towards the end of their season as well. Again, we plan out a year in advance. Um, we show the catalog, we'll show product and gear, and from there, we'll kind of see what they like, what they don't like, what fits uh, their brand and what they're looking to do. Um, you know, Under Armour has uh, a lot of sublimation uniforms or what our men's basketball team, as well as our women's team, we have um, tackle twill uniforms. So they're woven and stitched on with players' names and, and that kind of thing. So um, when it comes to getting ready for, for those sports and their uniforms, we will plan that out right around – uh, about May and we'll try to secure and get everything submitted by June then so then a lot of those uniforms will actually get here right about you know anywhere between September October uh, September October so what makes the customization process how does that take place so typically we we have a, a uniform builder there is a website that we use and you know we working with the coaching staff, we sit down and, and figure out what kind of design they're looking for, uh, what kind of uniform they like, um, you know, whether that's the armor fuse, which is our sublimation uniform, or if they like the tackle twill in, uh, in the uh, game day select uniform. From there, we, we just sit down and figure out which design fits them the best. And the, the staff sits down and they work on designing the uniform and, and creating it. And then from there, they send that over to myself and I just kind of clean it up any odds and ends that just kind of look, you know, may look different or unique or um, everything from the Big South logo and where that's located and, you know, meeting those guidelines for the Big South as well as the NCAA. And then, you know, if just small little things like if the Under Armour logo is one color here and it's different color on their shorts, just trying to line those up so that they match accordingly. It's from there, then I take that and our order form and I submit that over to Under Armour and then they process that. Um, we, once that gets in their system and they've checked everything and gone through everything, we have one final approval to double check all that information. Um, and once we've done that and we've submitted that over to our coaches for one last look over, um, that gets submitted and it's about a three, uh, three month process to get that, uh, those tackle tooled uniforms here. A lot different than the mom and pop days of taking it to the local sew shop and uh, getting everything stitched in. Yeah, um, absolutely. And absolutely. And we do some of that every once in a while. We know if we get a new player on board and, you know, we'll, you know, we'll take a, a blank jersey and we'll add his name uh, or her name on the uniform, too. So uh, we, we do see that from time to time, too. But, uh, yeah, it, things have come a long way. Nick, you mentioned the Under Armour logos, the conference specific logos for these teams. How does branding play out in terms of a uniform? So typically, you know, the NCAA actually has a, an equipment manual where within their policies and, you know, what the dimensions are and how many logos can be shown, as well as the Big South Conference has an, uh, a branding guide as well. And, uh, you know, they 
kind of dictate where we place the logos at and, you know, secondary locations. And then from there, we also have uh, four different uh, secondary logos that we can use from the Big South uh, Conference Office. Um, and you'll see those on the various different jerseys um, of those different colors. So that's usually when it comes to the branding side, that's how we, uh, when we go to place those on the uniforms, we just choose one of those and then we, uh, we kind of go from there. Since you're coming up on three years now in this role and having the chance to kind of see the overhaul of, of jerseys and equipment, things of that nature, give us a sense of what the process was like of grandfathering in some of the old Big South logos and now updating new uniforms and how that all takes place. Yeah, so it was kind of in a, it was a great transition because we, at the time when those uniforms, uh, we had gone to the new Big South logo, some of the uniforms didn't actually have the Big South logo on. So we've kind of, we've actually manufactured a lot of those on there. Um, there's obviously some that are still in play right now, but we are looking to phase those out here soon. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the, the uniforms, we just, again, we kind of goes back to the whole branding. We choose which, which four we want to use and we place those on there. Um, you know, coaches are wanting newer things and you know we usually have about a four month a four year cycle when it comes to uniforms now so you know you'll see a new uniform every about four years for uh for the team what makes the Under Armour company a good fit for Campbell Athletics uh that where do I start so they they are great from when it comes to their like customer service and you know kind of the the underdog mentality and you know being in a small town like Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, people don't recognize us uh, yet. And, you know, we just, we kind of go hand in hand, you know, we uh, we're on the up and up and, and people are seeing that now. And, and you can see that with Under Armour's product and they're only getting better, um, uh, you know, compared to the other brands that are out there. One of the areas we're also seeing growth is in foot apparel with Under Armour. And one of the sports you mentioned to me leading into this conversation was volleyball moving into an Under Armour contract. In terms of these teams switching from one shoe apparel to the next, what's that dialogue like between the coaches, yourself, and then the company trying to make sure everything's working together? Yeah, no, our, our staffs do a great job. They understand uh, in transitioning into the, uh, to the Under Armour footwear. I think the biggest thing is, is finding the shoe that fits the player first. And then from there, it's just getting feedback from our student athletes and knowing what, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, why the shoe, you know, has issues or, or can work, we can improve on getting better. And then just providing that feedback to Under Armour, because that's the only way the footwear is only going to get better too. And you've seen a lot of that with um, basketball has gotten really, really good with uh, some of their footwear and they're only improving too. So, but when it comes to newer programs and moving in them into footwear, uh, I mean, it, it can be challenging at times and switching them over, but uh, we, we try to make it as smooth a transition as possible. And again, Under Armour is great with their customer service and, and helping us and fulfilling our needs um, uh, that we need for those uh, programs. Nick, you mentioned the customer service side. And with so much of this being planned out six to 12 months in advance, how do you try to handle when that last minute change happens, whether it's a uniform or a player number and how, and how do you try to get things done in a, in a quick period of time? Well, and the biggest thing is, is just attention to detail and, and over communicating with about that information. So, you know, when it comes to a, like a, a tackle tool uniform, we have some flexibility on, on something like that. Now a sublimated uniform is a little challenging. It could be uh, to get in getting that uniform in, but there's a quick turnaround on something like that as well. So when, when it comes to small little changes like that, we're able to work pretty quickly because we have been so proactive on getting stuff here on in a timely fashion. So um, very rarely do we run into a lot of those issues. Um, but our coaches have, since being here now, like they are starting to understand their process and how, it, how long it takes to get things here um, and kind of, you know, planning accordingly and trying to get the stuff that they need um, and then also trying to, if they do add a, a student athlete, how we go about, um, you know, what's the, what's the next steps in getting them a, a, a uniform so that they're ready for the upcoming season. Since coaches are so result oriented, and even us in our business, we're about analytics and, and seeing the right viewership. What are some areas that you focus on in the day to day in terms of getting those results? So a lot of where my results obviously are, you know, obviously we're getting our product in a timely fashion. 
um, we're able to flip that and get it to our student athletes as quickly as possible. But then, you know, I also, there's a budgetary portion to it too. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, when it comes to that, I, you know, I make sure that each team is on, on target to meet, to meet those and that are under those uh, numbers. And we've done a great job in, in, in the three years that I've been here now and making sure that we're, um, we're meeting that and we're under, we're under that too. So I, I, when it comes to the goals aspect of it, I try to make sure that we're, we're staying under, but we're also putting out a great product for our student athletes and our staff and, uh, and donors as well too. Uh, I know our different programs will um, do various fundraisers and stuff too when it comes to Under Armour gear and, and trying to help their teams and stuff like that. Um, so. From, from your side of things, Nick, when you see the football program on ESPN multiple times this year and the basketball teams playing their various games on major networks, how does that exposure affect your relationship with Under Armour? Oh, it's, it's great. Obviously, you know, that only helps the brand out and, you know, we, it just gives us more opportunities to explore different avenues um, when it comes to negotiating further uh, within our contract and our deal and stuff like that. Uh, obviously all the great exposure that we had for football this past, you know, this year um, was awesome. And uh you know, again, it just opens up more doors and more avenues uh, with Under Armour, uh, you know, for future success, hopefully then. So you mentioned that dynamic working with the coaching staff. And for you personally, I think that's more than anyone in this entire athletic department. <laughs> you were married to one of the softball coaches, Danielle Glossenstanger, the pitching coach for the softball team. How is that relationship not only for you guys? but just trying to manage the day-to-day -day of what they need, but also having someone in your back pocket that can remind you of certain things they may want. Oh, it, it's great. We obviously have a great working relationship and then at home relationship, you know, we leave a lot of what work uh, at work. And then when we're obviously at home, we, we were able to spend time with each other and stuff like that. But it's just great to bounce ideas off of obviously somebody that's familiar with um, being on this side. And Danielle had uh, experience um, working on staff uh, as a as a fundraise as a fundraiser at uh, High Point University, so she kind of understands uh, this side of the world and and how to navigate and coming up with ideas or just bouncing different uh, designs or mock-ups or anything and just kind of giving her uh, perception on different things. What have you enjoyed most, Nick, about transitioning from High Point and then, of course, Western Carolina, where you went to school and working here at Campbell now? Oh, uh, it's, it's been great. Obviously, like, this wasn't the path that I was set on. And I think that's also a blessing too. Uh, you know, I come to work every day and it's awesome to be able to obviously work with Under Armour gear and equipment and uh, the great different personalities that we have here. Um, but, you know, my background was in facilities and operations. And so being able to take a lot of those different skill sets and apply them to what we are doing here with uh, gear and equipment and stuff like that. Um, I've been able to see a lot of, you know, positive results that come, have come out of with that. Nick, across the country, we see so many schools that, that don orange as their primary color. When you're trying to order gear and keep a level of consistency with uniforms and branding and things of that nature, how important is it to have that right shade of orange and also them to understand what we need from a branding standpoint? Yeah. So, under Armour actually has a dark orange that we associate ourselves with. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we will, we'll match that same orange. Um, you'll see that on uniforms and you'll see that with different apparel that we have. And we just try to get as close as possible with that. But um, when it comes to Under Armour and our orange, we associate ourselves with Under Armour's dark orange. Nick, we really appreciate the time. I know we got some swag for the, all these teams coming up this year and Certainly January is going to be a busy month for you. So we really appreciate it. Oh yeah. Thank you so much, Evan, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Go Camels.